We've seen that the behavior of the program simple pick is just to flash the two LEDs alternately unless we're pressing the user button, in which case the flashing stops and it resumes again once we let go of the user button. So now what we want to do is take a look at the program and see it why, it ha why it has that behavior. Okay, so here in the main function, the first thing we do is we set the value of some variable called trisf. Then we go down and set the value of another variable called latfbits.latf0. Do the same for a variable called latfbits.latf1. And then we enter this while loop here. In this while loop, we delay for a little while, and then we set another variable called latfinv. And then we exit the loop, and we come back up to the top because this while one means it's going to be an infinite loop. Now, if we take a look down here where delay is defined, you can see what it does. It does this for loop a million times, and every time it goes through the for loop, it checks this value of port dbits.rd7. If this port dbits.rd7 has a non-zero value, then when we negate, we take the logical negation of it, so non-zero value means true, if we take the logical negation of it, we get false, so this becomes while false, then it's gonna pop out of the while loop and continue with the for loop and do it a million times and then exit delay. On the other hand, if port dbits.rd7 has a value of zero, this logical not is going to make it into a true it's going to turn that false into a true, and it's going to say while true, and it's going to stay in that while loop until port dbits.rd7 becomes true, so that its negation becomes false, so it can exit that loop. So that's all this program does. So clearly, the, these variable values must mean something important. To find out what they mean, we should consult the data sheet for the PIC32. And in particular, if we look at the digital I.O. port section, we'll see the definitions of something called tris, lat, and port. We find out that tris, which is short, short for tri-state, determines whether a digital input, out, digital I.O. is input or output. So here we're, we're setting the tris F values. We're actually setting whether certain um, digital inputs are inputs or outputs. Lat special function registers are controlling the values written to digital outputs. And port special function registers return the digital inputs on input pins. So lat is for outputs, port is for inputs, tris determines whether the pin is an input or output. So we're starting to see that these variable assignments over here correspond to special function registers. And we can further take a look at the memory map that's also in the data sheet. And here we see tris f and down here lat f defined. And we can see which bits of those special function registers are actually defined. So each special function register has 32 bits. But if we take a look at trisf, for example, we'll see that many of the bits are not defined at all. In fact, all of these ones are not implemented, so they don't really exist. But if we come over here, we see that trisf1 exists and trisf0 exists, and those are exactly what we're using over here. So now if we want to see why simple pick has the behavior it has, we need to know that this trisf function here, this trisf set value setting, is defining bits f0 and bit f1 to be inputs, and I'm sorry, to be outputs. And those two outputs are controlling the LEDs, LED1 and LED2. And the way they're doing it like, is like this. So here's 3.3 volts down through a resistor, through an LED to one of the inputs, say RF0. Now, if RF0 is 3.3 volts, then no current is going to flow and the LED is off. If RF0 is low at ground, then current flows through the resistor, through the diode, the LED lights up. And this is LED1. LED2 is the same, except it's RF1 that controls that LED. And now here with RD7, that's defined as a digital input, and that's associated with the user button. And the way the user button works is this. So if the user is not pressing the button, then RD7, the user input, 
is going to read high, but if the user presses the button, then it's going to read low. So now if we come down here, we can see if the user is not pressing the button, it's reading high, so it's reading 1 at RD7. We take a negative of that, that 1, or logical true, becomes a logical false, so we're going to exit this while loop and just keep doing the for loop. And so we're going to run out of this delay very quickly, and then what this line here does is it's going to invert the values of F0 and F1. Therefore, one's going to turn off and one's going to turn back on. If we're pressing the button, though, then RD7 is going to evaluate a 0. We take the logical not of that, becomes true. It's going to stay stuck in that while loop forever. And only when we let go of the button is it going to be able to continue going through this for loop and exit delay and alternate the two flashing lights. So this explains how the input that we have available to us and the two outputs, LED1 and LED2, are controlled by this program. The only thing that we haven't looked at yet is why we're allowed to use these variables at all, trisf. We don't see any declaration of it anywhere in this code, so we can't use it according to C, except that we haven't looked yet at this xc.h. So the next thing we're going to want to do is look at this header file, xc.h. It must be defining these various special function register variables for us. And so we're going to take a look for them in xc.h.